We are recording. Our first presenter today, she joined Toastmasters uh, a little while ago when she was looking for a date. And lucky for her, she found the love of her life. She and her past husband have helped many people along their journey. I happen to be one of those people, and I'll tell you more about that in the future. Oh, Steve's raising his hand. He was one of those people. Jesse's raising his hand. So we have a couple people in the audience that have acknowledged the help of Mike Wilson and Kay Collis. Our past region advisor, past district director, is going to present to us about leadership today. Kay, take it away. Thank you, Carol. Once you become really good friends with, with Toastmasters and all of a sudden you feel comfortable saying, you know me, I trust you with whatever the introduction is, that's a unique bond when you think about it, really seriously, because we're not blood family. We don't work together, we're not co-workers, but we came together in this wonderful organization called Toastmasters International, and we all join for different reasons. And our journey takes all sorts of twists and turns and ups and downs and wild rides and then calm rides. So understand that Toastmasters is what you want it to be. If you're happy with your Toastmasters, congratulations. If you're not happy, then let's talk. Because I think if you're not, if you're having a hard time, you're not happy, you're frustrated, anything like that, you might need to talk to a trusted friend because there are those friends that tell the secrets. And then there's those friends that don't. I'm one of those that don't. My late husband, Mike, was the same way. He trained me, he was my mentor. and. It's one of those type of things. You get out of Toastmasters what you want to get out of Toastmasters. So understand that. If you want more, then step up and do more. And today I'm focusing on district leadership and what it can do for you in your career, in your life, in, your, in everything. Because even though some people have blinders on and they think, oh, I'm only going to do the area director and I'm only going to do division director, Trust me, there are so many other roles in the district that we need leaders to step up and serve in. So figure out what skill you want to develop and then go talk to a district leader and say, hey, I want to learn this or I want to learn that. And trust me, there is a role in Toastmasters for you to figure that out. The first screen share I'm going to show you is... Now let's go back to chat, make sure I press the screen share button first and then open the file. Okay, missions values. Sorry about the PDF edges and all that. I love it when I'm an in-person trainer because the handouts are always nice and clean. You don't have any of this technology that goes on with it. But the first handout I want to show you is the missions, values, and promises. This is an awesome one-page document. And what I advise all district leaders is I want you to know everything on this page. Now, before you have a meltdown and say, oh my goodness, there's a whole page of information. It's stuff we know. It's the Toastmasters International Mission Statement. It's our district mission statement and the club mission statement. And even though these words may not roll out of your mouth initially like you want it to, what I can promise you is as you repeat these words over and over, they will become your words. Because I know one thing about Toastmasters, we all wanna be in a positive, supportive learning environment. We wanna be trusted, we wanna be respected, we wanna be heard. And so our mission statements are awesome on that. And core values, I promise you, if you ever, if you ever, ever have to deal with international headquarters staff or international leaders, the core values are the most important thing and integrity is number one. 
I remember when this was introduced to me, goodness, over 10 years ago, and they somebody had come up with the acronym RISE, R-I-S-E, and that switched integrity and respect. Dan Rex liked to have had a cow. He had a meltdown. He said, integrity is the number one core value. If you don't have integrity, you don't have respect, service, or excellence. So please understand our core values. Integrity is the most important thing to have. It's what's in the room after you leave. It's what people remember the next day after they meet you or they work with you. So understand your integrity speaks volumes. And what I like to add on integrity is I personally watch your actions much more than listen to your words. Because as Toastmasters, yeah, we all know how to talk and we know how to be persuasive. And I've done all the sales presentations and I'm really good in sales. I can talk it. But do I walk it? And that's what I want to see in district leaders. What's your integrity? How do you treat others? I come from a Christian family where the golden rule is important. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you treat somebody else like you're like you are treating somebody, or if somebody else treats you the way you're treating somebody, and it's not really good, maybe you're frustrated and you're having a bad day and, and you just dump on somebody, then back up and say, hey, listen, it's a really lousy day. I'm sorry. I don't need to be involved with this because integrity is what they remember. And I can promise you that. Of course, respect for the individual, and that I'm going to get into that later on in the presentation. And service and excellence, those are important. We have our brand promise. And if you're one of the things I learned from my mentor years ago was the Toastmasters promise. And what I do with my clubs is I have new members read the Toastmaster promise out loud as their induction ceremony. It's simple, it's easy, it helps remind the old timers or the experienced members, those DTMs, it also reminds them of what we promise to each other. So understand the Toastmaster promise is really important. And I would, I would make it part of your new member packet, your guest packet, have people stand and recite it <clears throat> every month. So that's an option. And that's the thing I wanna start off with on district leadership. That page is, I think you should live it, not only memorize it, but do you live it each and every day? Because I can promise you, if you li live that page every day, your life will be greatly improved. You will be blessed beyond your wildest dreams. And I can promise you, miracles will find you when you start living and speaking and leading from a positive, supportive, caring environment where it's one for all and all for one and we're all in this together we're all learning and and nobody I understand hierarchies I come from corporate America I did 30 years in corporate America so I understand all that but in a volunteer organization like Toastmasters we do this because we want to now the second handout I have for you let's hit screen share first and find my other one. There we go. Let's see. Did that screen share correctly? Nope. Technical difficulties. Aren't we having fun? Okay, let's close that. Let's open this one the correct way. Now let's go back. See, even as a past leader, you can watch me learn and you can see step-by-step step how to do some of this. This is a page out of the district leadership manual. I believe it should be in the club leadership manual also. It's a service to members. And I wanna point out that the members are at the very top of the screen. The most important person in our organization is the member. And that means you. You are the most important person in this organization because without members, we don't have an organization. And I can promise you when you work with international headquarters staff and you work with international leaders, you start working with your district leaders, 
we remind, uh, especially as past leaders, we remind them constantly, the member is the most important person. And understand that the member, that's who pays the dues. That's the one that provides the money for the district to have funds to do things that they wanna do. Like finally, we have a district-wide meetup account. So all your club meetup accounts, I forget there's a spe special word in meetup, it's not merge, but there's one of those, how, I think it's link is the word, that we can this year finally get all of our club meetup accounts into the district meetup account. And once we do that, then that district meetup account is gonna be so strong and powerful here in Southern Nevada that we will have guests coming to our meetings on a regular basis. I watched it happen in the San Francisco and the San Jose area in District 4. They embraced Meetup. In fact, Meetup had its own Toastmasters club and taught all the other clubs how to do Meetup. And I can promise you it is an awesome benefit that our district has put in effect this year is to have a district-wide Meetup account. Now, some people get hung up or they get focused on the committees. And I agree. Committee work is awesome. It takes care of a lot of the work. So understand the committee work is important. And if you're not ready to step into a leadership role that you believe might be too much for you, then serve on the committee. Every leader needs assistance. We need our aces in the hole. Jesse's heard me say this so many times. You have to have a backup plan. You have to have an ace. You may have to have a king and a queen and a jack in the hole too. So I can promise you the accolades I have in Toastmasters, it's because I have as many as four or five people surrounding me ready to jump in at a moment's notice. And I can promise you it has saved my butt more times than I can count. The club, I like to always go over the club officers with district leaders because this is the beginnings of leadership. And I gave a speech years and years ago and everybody loved it. So I go through and remind club officers are just like running a business. The president is the CEO, the VP of education. Well, that's your training department, your human resources. It's the staffing and the scheduling. The vice president of membership, those are your customers and the people that work with the customers and how to grow your business. My special in public relations is technology and social media, the blogs and the websites, the communication, both internal and external. I had an interesting conversation when I was at Nevada State Bank the other day making deposits for my Toastmaster clubs. I asked the uh, staff if they were members of the Opening Doors Club, and we sure would like to have that club, club come back and be active. And that's when I learned about half of that Toastmasters club got transferred to Utah. And that, yeah, they thought the uh, manager, branch manager thought it was still on the internet. And I said, well, here's my card. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. The public relations is really important. Secretary, that's the official record keeper. That's the compliance officer, the historian and the parliamentarian in a business. Treasure, of course, is pretty self-explanatory. It's the CFO. It's the person that does the budgets. I don't know if you like budgets or hate budgets, but budgets are required part of life. And here's where I have a lot of fun. And this is where I go back to my original training back in 1991 when I joined Toastmasters, the Sergeant at Arms. I didn't understand what and why that role was there. Then it was explained to me, that's the party manager. They're in charge of the social events. They're the facilities manager. They keep track of all the assets. So when you share that the sergeant in arms is your party person, I can promise you that club officer role gets filled fast in all the clubs I belong to. As you move through the club and then you start going into the area and the division and the district, you can see there's the council meetings. You can see the at the area and the division and the district. It takes a lot of volunteers to run this organization. Now, I also have heard, and I have to dispel this myth that, oh my goodness, some of these roles are 40 hours a week. That person may have spent 40 hours a week on that role, but I can promise you nowhere in the Toastmasters world will you find time commitments and a number of hours next to the name. There's suggestions, 
because I've held all of these roles and I've held it as a newbie that didn't know anything as well as an experienced person. The role is, is time consuming as you allow it. Hear my heart on that. As you allow it, that's the time commitment. So as you move through, a lot of people don't understand what a region advisor is. Well, there's the region advisor on the, on the list. And then region advisors also, we work with the board of directors and world headquarters staff. We're the liaison between the two. So understand this is a really cool page. And I think every district leader needs to understand this page. Do you wanna memorize it? Fine, if you wanna memorize it, but again, just like the previous page, do you live it? Do you live it? Do you understand it enough that you can, when you bump into somebody and they start talking and you go, oh my goodness, this person's really good in sales. I need you in membership. I need you in this. Or, oh, you, you've got a blog and you, you're an influencer on the internet. And oh my goodness, you need to be in PR. Sorry, Jennifer, that's how George Lund and I identified which role to nominate you for. Because <laughs> George was bragging about it and I went, oh, we know exactly what role she goes into and let's convince her that that's the role she needs. Because I, I have found, and George and I do, do this a lot, when you volunteer and you do your passion, you do it a whole lot better and you have more fun and you, you get more accomplished. So I like to also tell district leaders, discover a new passion. Cause I can promise way back when I started my corporate career, I had no idea that I knew anything about membership and sales. But as I jumped into those roles or voluntold into those roles, even way back then, I discovered, oh, I do have a natural knack for that. So that's fun on that end. Now, why should you step up to district leadership? I'm gonna give you some of the information that I gave uh, about eight years ago in a TLI keynote that ended up filling every one of our district positions within 48 hours. So I want you to know, I may touch one of your hot buttons. And what I want you to know is you need to co contact Kristen Harrell or Carol Campbell and let them know I wanna be in this role. And since they're both on this call, you can send them a private message if all of a sudden while I'm talking, you go, oh, oh, that's what I want. Send them a message and say, this is what I wanna help with. Now, some people think that an area director is just that person that shows up twice a year to do a report. That's the minimum requirement. You're right, it's the minimum requirement. But what an area director, in my opinion, also does is they're the you're, those are the training wheels of district leadership. That's when, are you ready to influence more than just your eight, 10 or 12 club members? Are you ready to influence? Are you ready to change the lives of 30, 40, 50, 60 people in multiple clubs? Can you be a cheerleader? Can you be a motivator? Can you get others to do something that they didn't know they wanted to do? I mean, seriously, do we really wanna be on counter every week in our club meetings? No, but somewhere along the line, we had to step up to be the all counter. And of course, I, I think we need to change the dreaded all counter to the honored all counter because the all counter has to really improve their listening skills. And being a successful leader is learning how to listen. I can promise you that. And a lot of times, and, and I love area director, if you talk to past leaders, the majority of us would do area director again because it's a fun role. You're working in a smaller group, but you're actually changing lives. You're actually watching these little, it's like the tight little rosebud. And as the rosebud opens, you see this leader develop and they have skills and they motivate and they inspire. And all of a sudden at the end of their term, they're this new person. And they thank you for pushing them into that role, the voluntold role. And I know those that raised their hands earlier about me voluntelling them into roles, you've grown tremendously. Your life is richer, not just in the monetary sense, but in the heart sense. And let's face it, the heart, in my opinion, is more important than the dollar sign. 
Now, as you move from area director, you may go, hmm, this was really fun. I think I can do the next level, which is division director. Well, that's when you start influencing hundreds of people, anywhere from 100 to a couple of hundred in your division. And also the division director shows or helps develop your vision. One of the things that's important for leadership is to have a vision. Do you know where you're going tomorrow? But do you know where you're going three months from now, six months from now? Do you know where you wanna be at the end of the year? Because things don't just happen in Toastmasters. I've been surprised by so many people that come up and go, wow, there's an army of workers behind me doing stuff. They do that because you're a visionary leader and you're providing them a roadmap of what you want to accomplish. So division director really develops that skill. And if you're in a company or if you're in an organiza another organization and you need to work with hundreds of people, then I advise you and I encourage you to step up to division director. We only need four of them in our district. That's all, only four out of over a thousand members here in our Valley need to step up for division director. Now, as you do division director and you start developing that skill of visionary leadership and planning and, and all of that, you discover, wow, there's the army's growing behind me because the past leaders are there. And then you've got your newbies that are in front of you that are looking up to you for guidance and advice. And you go, hmm, that trio does, that trio position looks pretty interesting. Club growth director, there's that VP of membership, the sales and the membership, the program quality, which is the VP of education, and the training, the education, the, the satisfaction from the member. So, and then of course, district director, the ultimate leader for the district. And with 125 to 130 districts here in the, United, in the world, there's only 130 leaders that are district directors globally in this organization. An organization of over 300,000 members. And you're in that top 130 leadership role. That's pretty awesome. That's when you can start impacting thousands of leaders thousands of people. And I love that I learned in the very beginning of my leadership career, those two handouts that I did in the beginning, that I just instinctively lived it each and every minute of, of my life when I was in leadership. Because it is rewarding when you're a past leader to have so many members come up to you and say, Kay, because of you, you were so kind, you were so nice and encouraging. I stepped up and did this. I did that. And I accomplished this in my church. I accomplished this in my community. Toastmasters helped me to do more. And they're so appreciative. And all I, 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 was, I was being me because I chose to live my life in a positive, supportive learning environment. I believe we need to learn something new every single day. And Toastmasters helps us to do that. Now, when you serve as district director, of course, then you start getting the attention of the world headquarters staff, the international directors and international leadership team. And they start looking at you going, hmm, I wonder, we have 14 international director positions available. They're two year terms. And then we have a lot of region advisors. And I'm glad to say from my first term of 2010, 2011, when we only had 14 region advisors, the wisdom of the international board and the staff realized that we needed more region advisors. So a lot of our regions have two region advisors. So there's multiple roles to step up. And I encourage you, think about this. Where do you wanna to be tomorrow, next month, next year? Where do you wanna be five years from now? I saw a funny thing with this pandemic and I have to throw some humor in you know, go back to your goals back in 2015 and see what your goals were in 2015. And did it match 2020 that we were in a pandemic and lockdown? Oh my goodness, no. I don't think anybody, I mean, seriously, Steven Spielberg couldn't even even written a movie that could 
talk about what we're going through in this pan global pandemic. But those that choose to lead, those who choose to learn, those who choose to stay positive are making the best of it. And we're increasing our skill sets. We're increasing our ability to connect with other people. Virtual hugs, who would have thought 10 years ago, virtual, we'd know how to do virtual hugs and virtual applause where we shake our hands. We now know how to do that. We're better because of it. So those are some of the basics of district leadership. Now I wanna share some personal stories with you. And of course, Joan Rivers is one of my favorite comedians. I grew up with her, listening to her and her Can We Talk is also another thing I have found with a lot of women that we seem to love to do. Can we talk? Can we really talk? And can we trust each other? Because we need that. And guys, the only reason that you don't jump in as much as us women, for some reason, somebody way back in, in hierarchy made men macho and perfect and protectors and that you're not supposed to share your feelings. I'm here to tell you, get over that one. Understand a man that can shed a tear. Oh my goodness, ladies, don't we just melt if we see a guy with a tear in his eye? I know when I do speeches and I get into the emotional side and I do see that, or they look down, you know, the typical male approach is to look down, look away and doodle. I'm connecting because you connect through emotions. So can we talk? <sighs> Leadership. My personal opinion is we need to build people. I'm glad that I'm a people person. Not everybody's a people person. There's those that are task oriented and then there's those that are people oriented. I was raised by task-oriented people, an engineer and an accountant. You can't get more task-oriented than those two. But I learned that secretly deep down inside of me, I was a people person. And when I embraced that and allowed that part of me to come out, I was able to do a hundred times more beneficial work in this world as a people person. Now, at first, and we all go through this, and I love to watch leaders and members, and, and I, don't we all love icebreakers? I just saw an icebreaker Wednesday night. It was awesome. It was so cute, and we, we love that. And we start out, and we need those certificates, and we need those little plaques, and those little awards, and the little doodads, and the ribbons, and, and so the leaders know that we need to reward our members. District leaders know they need to reward their area and division directors with stuff, doodads, certificates, ribbons, because it makes us feel good. And everybody knows, if you've heard a speech from me, you hear me talk about my I love me wall. I really should change up my office so that my I love me wall is in my background, but I do have my I love me corner where all my plaques, of uh, Toastmaster of the year for the district, area director of the year, division director of the year, distinguished district governor, my region advisor, and of course my presidential citation that hang on the wall. You have to have an I love me wall. It starts out with your club certificate, best speaker, best evaluator, best table topics. But understand that is how we begin building people up. Because in sales, I need to find out what motivates you to buy. So in leadership, I need to find out what motivates you to step up and serve in a role. Think about that. As a leader, your job is to discover what's their passion and then go find the role that that passion fits. And I've watched leaders over the years, and I'm even guilty of it sometimes if I get caught up in the energy, is I, I look at the role and then I start trying to pick people. And that's trying to put the puzzle pieces together. And how many of you put puzzles and you always, is every time you pick up a piece, you put it in the perfect spot? No, no, that's not how you do a puzzle. You do, you build the outline. So in leadership, I encourage you, please 
find their passion first, then find the role. I can promise you, you will be a much more happier leader. You'll be more successful. Your team will love you. They'll work harder for you. You as a team, you'll accomplish more. And that's how you build them up. Because when you're passionate, when you're working on something that you love, you don't keep track of the time, do you? Think about it. When you're baking cookies or you're working in the yard or, or working on an engine or whatever you might be doing, if it's something you love, you don't set a stopwatch, do you, or a timer, you do it. And that's the role of a leader is to find the member's passion and then put that person in that role. And I have to admit, all of us, every single one of us, myself included, we all have had stuff happen to us. We've had our heart and our brain. We've, we've been trampled on. We have been kicked to the curb. We've been demeaned. We've been belittled, yelled at. And unfortunately, some of us recipients of domestic violence. We all go through that. That's part of life. That's part of being a human being. Understand that. Recognize it. Sympathize. And then, as my dad would say, get over it. That's yesterday's story. Make your story today. Be stronger because of what you went through. And, and we all have seen the motivational stories about strong men and women, and it's because you don't know all the scrapes and bumps and bruises we've had, and it's true. We all have gone through it. And I've been listening to some YouTube uh, motivational videos, and this one speaker in particular really gets on his little soapbox about people telling their story. Oh my goodness, do you hear that same story over and over and over and over again? Well, they're living in the past. Somehow or another, we've got to get them to current day. And if you've got a person that's consistently living in the past, mm, leadership might not be a good thing for them at this point in time because they've got something they need to deal with to get over it. And of course, if you're a rock and roller, if you happen to like the Eagles, they have an awesome song called Get Over It. My neighbors know it well, because when I'm having one of my bad days and it's like, okay, I just have to get let the go of this, I will crank up that song and my neighbors get to hear it and it's only three to four minutes. I know the police won't respond that fast and it'll be over and done with. And then when the police show up, my house will be quiet. So I, I don't know why that neighbor was calling you. But yes, I'll crank up, get over it by the Eagles and get over it. Pity parties are like a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, but a pity party is less than five minutes. When you build others, then you will find you, will, you are building yourself. When you help others get over their stuff, you're benefiting them, but you're also benefiting yourself because you're learning how to recognize that in others faster and you're able to help them deal with it faster and better. Because we all, we all wanna be the best of the best of the best. We're human beings. We're just, it's in our DNA. We wanna be achievers. We wanna be winners. We wanna do more. And that's what leaders do. And a lot of leaders will come to me and thank me for that 30 minutes or the hour or the box of Kleenex and the tears. And yeah, we just got to get it out of our system, get over it and move on. Now, as I was putting this presentation together, of course, some of you heard me talk about my new little puppy. And she reminded me of the second tip. And that is very simply humor. We have to learn to laugh. We have to learn not to take ourselves quite so seriously. I mean, don't sweat the small stuff. How many of you have read that book? Maybe it's time to go read that book again because I can promise you when you read a book a second, third or fourth time, you're in a different spot in your life 
And that book's going to mean more and different to you the second, third, and fourth time. I've read Norman Vincent Peale's Positive Thinking dozens of times. And every single time, it's like, how did that sentence get in there? I know I've read this book 12 times. I know this sentence was not in here the other 12 times. And now I'm reading it the 13th time. Well, it was now time for me to understand and, and bond with that sentence. So if you have a book and it's something that's really powerful for you, a lot of people are doing Tony Robbins right now. I did Tony Robbins 32 years ago when he first got started. There's a lot of powerful people out there that will change your life. So humor is important. And of course, puppies are notorious for playing and making you laugh as well as frustration, laughter or frustration. It's your choice. And I can promise you there are going to be situations. There's going to be comments. There's going to be words. Oh my goodness. There's going to be words that you will have to laugh at because the dead bodies don't count. You get thrown in jail for dead bodies. Leaders don't lead it from jail. <laughs> and that's, that's important. And, and I can promise you, a lot of people comment on my smile. There's a lot of times the smile is there because it's like, okay, I just have to smile because I don't get this. I don't understand it. I don't know why they're doing this. I, I don't know. But the smile is a happy response. So understand, develop a smile, because when you're smiling, you're attracting people. And Dr. Smedley, he founded this organization almost 100 years ago on the phrase, we learn best in times of enjoyment. And I can promise you, what meetings do you enjoy the most? Is it where the laughter was occurring in your club meeting? Don't you walk out of that meeting going, well, that was a great meeting. I'm glad I went to it. And I know I hear members all the time go, you know, Toastmasters is the high point of my day. I come to my meeting because it replenishes me. It fills me back up. I'm happy again. Understand your sense of humor because what's funny to me may not be funny to you. And I have a sense of humor with my family that's very different than the sense of humor with my Toastmasters. And that's why I always tell you guys, uh, don't listen to my brother. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So understand that your sense of humor is going to be different than other people's sense of humor. One thing, unfortunately, that we have to deal with in today's world is all those policies and procedures and protocols that we have in place because some people don't understand boundaries. Bullying is not accepted in Toastmasters. Sexual harassment is not accepted in Toastmasters. Vulgar crude, foul language is not accepted in Toastmasters. And it's, in a way, it's a sad thing that we have to put that in the written word for us to enforce and have to call members out and say, that is unacceptable behavior. That is not code of conduct, code of ethics. We need to be better than this. So understand a sense of humor will help in some of these situations. I'm not a fan of self-deprecating humor, even though a lot of people love it. I, it just, it doesn't do anything for me. But you get Red Skelton, you get some of the funny ha-ha humor. I mean, as crazy as the cartoons are, I read cartoons every day. Some of you have received little note cards with a cartoon in it. And Kristen, I've got one on my desk for you because of Henderson, and it says, uh, it's an earnest and uh, Frank and Ernest. And he goes, there's the water assignment that says Water Street. And Ernest is saying to Frank, I'm going to walk on water today. And I thought of you and I said, Henderson, oh my God, Water Street. We all need to go walk on water, don't we? So wouldn't that be fun for our next Hall of Fame go around to be walking on water? So understand humor. It's necessary. In my opinion, it's required and leadership. The third point and my final one is listen. I know this is hard for a lot of us. It's hard for me, but listening is so valuable. It is so powerful. 
amazing times, I can promise you just sitting still and quiet and listening, all of a sudden, the person I'm with, their problems disappear. Because both in men and women, you start sharing problems and the other one wants to solve it. Well, you know, there's a lot of us, we don't need the solution. We know what the solution is. We just need to get it off our chest. We just need to vent. And when somebody's venting, you know, it's okay to say, are you venting? So I'll just listen. Or are you discussing and I need to come up with a solution together? So understand listening is both ways. There's times that you'll need a solution. And then there's times you just need to sit quietly and nod your head and agree with them. Now, one thing that is very, this year has shown with the pandemic that just drives me nuts is the interrupting when a speaker is talking. I love Zoom because if you don't behave, you can be muted. I know it was supposed to be funny. Oh, well, hope you all laughed at your, at your computer. But one thing that drives me nuts is interrupters. I call that toddler leadership because if you think about a two-year-old, what do they do? They interrupt. They're the most important person. We don't need toddler leadership in the district. Please hear me on this. And if I do interrupt you, it is perfectly okay to say, I'm not finished, Kay. And then that's, that's my cue. I know, oops, I was being a toddler again. Er, but I wanted to help. I wanted to do something. But we don't need toddler leadership. So understand that toddler leadership, interrupting, not needed in district leadership. Please don't do that. So listening is very important. And I'll close with the very simple comment that every July 1st, we need, we need a new team of district leaders in District 115. Please understand, it's only a year of your life. In three more months, this pandemic will be a year of our life. And we survived it. Don't tell me you can't survive a year of leadership. You'd be amazed at what all you can learn and look at the different roles in our district. We have the traditional ones, area directors and division directors and the trio. We have public relations. We have finance manager. We have administration managers. We have a lot of committee chairs. So understand that's important. We need people in all those roles and we don't need, I do not want to be doing double, triple and quadruple work anymore. I want one role, one, one. And for right now, it's basically parliamentarian because I haven't trained anybody else to do parliamentarian yet, but I'm working on that. I have my sights on the person I think I want to step up. But as a leader, understand you have the ability to make the unimportant feel important. You can educate those who do not know. You can protect those who are scared or naive. You can give a voice to those who are silent. And you can praise those who work hard because the praise is so important. And as a leader, you can correct the injustices in this world. You can correct the wrongs one person at a time. And in my opinion, for me, the most important part of being a leader is to treasure and recognize the precious people in my life. Because when you step up to leadership, you're beginning your journey, yes. But your journey will go from it's about you to it's about them. And when you make others feel important, I can promise you, I can promise you, I mean it. You will find the greatest gift of all in life, which is appreciation and caring and compassion. And when life does throw you that horrible curveball, that it will, we all get it. Granted, blood family is great, 
but the family we choose as friends are the ones that'll get you through it. And I see I've got a little bit of time. So I am going to go. I see there's a lot of chat going on. And I'm going to ask Carol to unmute herself. And if you guys want to have some questions. Oh, great. I see opening doors is active. Yay. Um, if you have some questions for me, it looks like we've got about 10 minutes of Q&A. So whoever types first gets, uh, gets some of the questions answered. The, Kristen is going to be like all the rest of our leaders. Area director is a fun role. It's a scary role, but it can be fun. I also like what Kristen said. Your stories and experiences may be exactly what make you the leader we need. The one that changes things. Yes. Very true. Well, and that, that really, when I got my presidential citation, that was one of the things that really shocked me being at the con convention in Chicago was how many leaders came up to me. And when I was an RA and I did the trio training, both at mid-year and at the international convention. And then when we did this district reformation, leaving district 33 and creating 115 and changing the rules, we changed the global rules of how to form a new district. I had no idea that that would change so many people. I, I just did what I knew the members wanted and what my heart told me. So I'm not seeing any questions. Let's see. What's a, what was one of my questions when I first came into leadership? Uh, do I have to follow the rules? because I'm a rebel at heart. <laughs> um, yes, you do have to follow the rules. Now the question is, who's gonna monitor whether you follow the rules or not? Is it gonna be yourself or is it gonna be the leader that's in charge of you? So understand the rules are there for a reason. Definitely reading good leadership books. Je Jesse Oakley, again, is one of those that came up to me and said, thank you, I gave him a, a leadership book. It was just one of those things that spoke my spoke to my heart. I think I became a better leader when I started listening to my heart more than I did my brain. Because then I connected with them better. So yes, definitely reading leadership books helps. There's all sorts of different ways to do it. I would also encourage everyone to be on their own self-improvement discovery path. And I like the word discovery path because we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. Again, Steven Spielberg did not do a movie called Pandemic and let us know what we've, we've been going through for the last nine months, did he? Really? Now, after the fact, as we know in Toastmasters, especially in contest season, after the fact, we hear all about it. But I want to see the person with the crystal ball that predicted all of this. Uh, Dr. John C. Maxwell is my leadership guru that I pay a lot of attention to. That's another great one. There, there's so many. There's hundreds of great leadership books. A lot of our Toastmaster leaders have written books. Find the one that speaks to your heart. That's important. Because I can teach the skills. I can teach the task. But it's really tough to teach how to care how to be compassionate. So I'm all about the people side of it because I can teach the task side of it. Hmm. Carol, do you have a question? Do I have a question? I'm going to cover hopefully lots of questions in my presentation about area uh -huh. directors, which is coming up soon. Uh -huh. And I noticed that we have several of our current area directors on this. Uh -huh. And hopefully we have some prospective area directors. Yeah, area director is a great role. I, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. But on the self-discovery path, if you really want to know, you really want to know what you're made of, you, are, you really want to know, can you handle it? And I go back to, uh, oh, I hate it when my memory disappears when I'm talking. 
the uh, the military show on uh, where the Gene Hackman pops off on you can't handle it. You want to know if you can? Yeah, that yeah. one. Uh, uh, anyway, oh, a few good division, men. Yeah, a few good men. That's it. Division director will will test you on that. Division director is an awesome role for what are you made of? What's in your heart? What will people say about you after you leave the room? <laughs> yeah, what do they say about you when you leave the room? That's your integrity. Few good men, yep. And also watch movies over and over. I've got some really positive movies that I watch over and over again too. What we can do with this is we can conclude uh -huh. this presentation. 